Hello everyone, just a really quick one as I'm currently sick and phlegmy, so I'm on my computer with my webcam, I'm gonna make this really quick. Uh, a lot of work went to this one, well over 100 hours between the scripting, the recording, the A roll, the B roll, the gameplay capture, the final edit, which I'm now currently doing as we speak. Um, a ton of work went into this as I'm trying to move this to a more sort of semi-professional standardized format. Uh, your support goes a long way, liking, viewing, subscribing, you know, all that jazz, but even if it's just showing it to a few friends that might find this interesting, uh, you know, I'll try to play the algorithm as much as I can, and I can only do that with your guys' support. So please, thank you, and uh, enjoy the show. Shin Megami Tensei 4 is a JRPG published by Atlas Studios for the 3DS. In it, you play as the protagonist, a samurai from the Eastern Kingdom of Mikaido, tasked with defending the people, capturing the black samurai, all whilst recruiting your own demons from the depths of Naraku. I am not pronouncing any of these names right, like that just forewarning right now. <laughs> For those of you who may not know, Persona is actually a spin-off of the SMT series. It shares many of the same core gameplay ideas and mechanics, but don't let that fool you, SMT4 has a few tricks of its own. It is one of the hardest JRPGs I've ever played and it's all the more better for it. Writing this actually has me really stumped right now. I'm going to be comparing this to Persona 5 Royal just because it is a very similar game mechanically. I don't think I can say that <laughs> without getting lynched. <laughs> And I've got to say, the Persona 5 Royal and SMT4 are definitely tied for my favourite JRPGs of all time. I can't say that one is better than the other, and it's because they focus on different things. Persona 5 definitely has better character development and visual design, thanks immensely to its confidant and calendar system. It really gives the player freedom how they want to tackle the game. Uh, do they hang out with this one person to boost their tactical capabilities in battle, or do they hang out with this party member to boost their effectiveness? It's all up to you how you want to tackle the game and its many dungeons. And for that, it is one of my favorite games of all time. While Shin Megami Tensei 4 presents a world with incredible atmosphere and believability and possibly the best turn-based combat system I've ever seen in the game. Let me start with this. If you're looking for an RPG with some incredible mechanical foundations and just fun combat, SMT4 has got you covered in spades with its press turn mechanic and elemental resistances. It is possibly the most unique thing I've ever seen in the game and it gets even better the further you go through. Uh, your part it consists of your main character, which you can build uh, however you want, along with three demons which you can recruit or fuse later on in the game, and it's so much fun. They all have the same stats, you know, HP, SP, magic, strength, agility, luck, the other one I'm forgetting, uh, but it's all very much customizable with how you want to tackle the game. Uh, but the main thing is the elemental information, which plays a large role in battle, and I'll get to that in a bit. Starting by being made a samurai, you're quickly acquainted with the cast and thrown to the depths of Naraku, this sort of dungeon infested with demons that you as samurai have to sort of clear out. Uh, you're given a few tutorial missions here where you get a basic grip of the mechanics. So the way combat works in SMT4 is actually pretty unique. It uses the press turn mechanic like I was saying before. What happens is your party gets a turn for each combatant you have in it, so up to a maximum of four. If you ever hit an enemy weakness or score a critical hit, one of those turns like lights up and turns into a half turn, uh, what this essentially means is you get an extra turn. If on the flip side, however, you miss an attack or it's blocked, you lose two turns, and god forbid you have an attack absorbed or reflected because that will forfeit the rest of your turns. So it's all about figuring out the weaknesses of the enemy party and trying to work around it. Naturally, your battles will have different combinations of enemy demons and people and whatever, so if you want to be SP efficient, use those magic all skills, but just remember that if it does get blocked or reflected by one enemy, even if you've hit a weakness, you still are forfeiting some of your turns. You know, be smart about your SP. If you ever score a critical hit, hit an enemy weakness, evade, dodge, block, or absorb an attack, you have a chance to start smirking. Smirking is this game's greatest and worst mechanic at the same time, and I'll get onto why that is. Uh, TLDR, smirking is very powerful, and you want to be smirking as much as you can in this game. It gives you some incredible benefits, which I will list out right now. Any character smirking has a 95% chance of a physical attack being a critical hit, a 70% chance of a gun attack being a critical hit, an attack power increase equivalent to three uses of power kajah, a 100% hit rate on all physical attacks, gun attacks, and attack skills, the ability that any attack that would hit a weakness be treated as a normal attack instead, the inability to receive critical hits, an 85% chance to dodge any attack, and if you somehow have a full four member party all four smirking at the same time, you will heal 50% of your maximum HP and SP. So, quite frankly, you want to be smirking all the time. If Naraku is teaching you to study up and make sure you're using those mechanics effectively, then the boss fight at the end of it is definitely the final exam. It is renowned for being balls to the wall hard 
hard and ends your game pretty quickly. If you've gone from a deathless run so far, it's not happening after this one. It is so much fun just trying to be able to beat through it and it's now my new favorite boss fight of all time in a video game. Uh, really quickly, before I go on, let me just mention the soundtrack in this game. It is an absolute banger. I'm just gonna play this clip right now of entering the uh, Minotaur's chamber, which is this first boss fight, and it is so amazing. So the context here is that samurai aren't allowed to venture into the lands of the unclean ones, which is past the depths of Naraku. However, a demon is guarding the passage, one who is bound by a pact by the first king of Makaido, so no one's ever gone there. In order to unravel the mystery of the Black Samurai, your current story objective, you are required to beat this boss in order to advance the main plot. Over a thousand and five hundred years have passed since I formed the pact with my master. You are either truly skilled or fools indeed to ignore his warning. I will dine on your blood that wishes to mingle with the unclean. Now come, samurai. Put on a good show. So this boss fight with the Minotaur is stupidly hard. Uh, it requires you to use all the mechanics and intricacies of the combat system you've learned up to this point. Uh, for those of you who haven't played this game, you may be asking yourself why I'm making such a big deal out of it. So let me just go over a few things that this boss fight introduces to us. So, first of all, this is the first major boss fight of the game. You will notice that while the Minotaur is one demon, he gets three turns to himself. Uh, this is the first time you've learned that some demons have more turns in fights. Before this, you've been able to reduce the number of enemy turns by killing demons, so you sort of target them a bit. In this one, however, the Minotaur is your only enemy, so he gets three turns for the whole fight that you have to deal with. Secondly, his moveset is really good. He has Warcry, which can reduce the attack and defense of your whole party and can stack. And at this point of the game, you don't have access to stat boosting skills without a bit of grinding and sort of working towards it. So you're sort of stuck with these lower defense and attack values the whole way through. He also gets Charge, which makes his next physical attack deal two and a half times more damage than it normally would, making it a one hit kill for any creature under 150 HP, when he pulls out his third move, Labyrinth Strike, which is a multi-hitting attack. Finally, and I'm gonna try and pronounce this right, Oni Kaguri has a high critical chance meaning that you are gonna get hit hard and he gets an extra turn from it. So basically, the longer this fight goes on, the more you get debuffed, the less SP you have to heal and damage and less likely of a chance you have to survive the onslaught. Alright, and one thing I have yet to mention, which will explain all of my hatred for some of the mechanics in this game, and the reason I sort of love them as well. Uh, enemies, particularly boss monsters, can start taking advantage of the press turn system if they hit weaknesses, and they can start smirking. This is not good. If you see an enemy smirking, that means you're about to get one shot from something. So, just to remind you, if any character scores a critical hit, hits an enemy weakness, absorb blocks, dodges, or reflects an attack, they get the following benefits. A 95% chance of a physical attack being a critical hit, a 70% chance of a gun attack being a critical hit, an attack power equivalent to three uses of target jump, a 100% hit rate of all physical attacks, gun attacks, and attack skills, the ability that any attack will hit a weakness be treated as a normal attack instead, the inability to receive critical hits, and 85% chance to dodge any attack. So, good news, bad news for you. Good news, the Minotaur is weak to ice attacks, meaning that you can just throw Bufu at it and get an extra turn using the press turn system. This is fantastic, you should be doing this in your fight pretty much with every character. Bad news, the Minotaur is resistant to fire attacks. It will completely block them, meaning that if you use Argy against the Minotaur, not only are you forfeiting two turns, you're also giving him a chance to smirk. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, oh Jack, that's not too bad. I just won't use fire attacks against this guy. That's okay because you don't need to. Walter will do it for you. You can't tell companions in this game to avoid using certain moves. Most unlucky for you. Eventually, you do learn how to beat him. Uh, pretty much the solution is to fuse demons with Bufu and buffing skills and making sure you have a healer in your party and praying to God you get Jonathan as your companion because this game doesn't let you choose. Uh, he's the one with all the uh, eye skills, which makes him just immensely useful in this fight. Uh, I hate to get too elitist over this game because I know the infamy of the SMT community. Um, all you gotta do is have a look at a Persona form board anywhere. <laughs> 
But uh, the Minotaur does act as a checklist towards sort of all the mechanics in the game, and it does literally gate off the rest of the whole game. Uh, I sort of like that because if you weren't able to beat the Minotaur, this game probably wasn't for you. It does stop you from getting to all the hard stuff that does happen later on. Uh, but I think for those who beat him successfully, they do really enjoy the game, and I sort of like how the Minotaur works in that regard. And now we hit a bit of a junction. Uh, for those of you who have played SMT4 before, you'll notice that I've only been using footage from the first bit of the game, uh, just because SMT4 does have a few twists and turns. Now, if you've played any SMT game before, pretty much any um, Megami Tensei game in the series, you'll know what I'm alluding to here uh, with this first sort of act reveal, but I'm just gonna give everyone this spoiler warning anyway, in case I've convinced you that you should give this game a shot. It does have a few like cool twists and turns that if you've never seen uh, the story of this game are actually really interesting. So please, right now, consider this just spoiler warning. From this point onwards, I'm going to talk about the rest of the game and all the mechanics that are hidden from the player. Um, yeah, if, if again, if I've interested you in any sort of way and you want to try this out yourself, I highly recommend it. Awesome. So you beat the Minotaur and you begin to finally venture further down into the land of the Unclean Ones. Now, the whole game up to this point has sort of been hinting that something isn't right. Uh, there are weird occurrences happening all across the place. You're seeing visions of your friends in a post-apocalyptic landscape. You're seeing this uh, scaffolding construction that's supposed to be meant for people, even though you've only seen demons up to this point in the dungeon. Uh, the signs telling people not to kill themselves. The gun you find lying on the floor in a room as soon you enter in, no one knowing what it is except Burrows, who clearly knows more than she's letting on at this point. Uh, then this scene plays out, which I'm gonna just let it play out in full because it is really incredible and introduces the landscape very well. What? What is this? There are stars below us. It's lovely. So, Shin Megami Tensei 4 is a JRPG by Atlas Studios for the 3DS, taking place mainly in Tokyo. Uh, now, I've never played an SMT game before, and I haven't seen too much footage of SMT 4, so this game is a bit of a bit of a shock to me. I must admit, I have seen this one video have uh, called SMT 4 as a masterpiece, which I'm going to link up here because it is an absolutely amazing watch by Simply Dad, and I encourage everyone to get it. Uh, but shameless plug aside for that dude, I think he's amazing. Uh, SMT 4 just has an incredible atmosphere, and I'm going to direct pinch off him right now. The music as you enter into Tokyo is incredible. I think the best thing about Tokyo, which you learn as you discover this game, is the amount of detail that went into it. For example, uh, there's this one conversation you can have with this dude in an underground railway station, I can't remember which one, and he complains about how there's no water, and which he attributes that to the fact that there's a hole in the giant ceiling above Tokyo. Uh, the whole idea being that the evaporation cycle has been broken and all the water that is evaporating is now leaking out of Tokyo, and that attention to detail is so genius and I absolutely love it. The city of Tokyo is presented as a world where people have suffered and died. Uh, however, Tokyo is still alive and thriving and people hang on to whatever hope they can. It is very fun and the atmosphere is all there just within the setting and it doesn't remind you every 20 seconds like other games. Um, I absolutely love it, it's just background storytelling at its finest. Throughout the game, you are given different dialogue options within boss fights and conversations. Now, I've already given you the spoiler warning, so just so you know, this game is paying attention with a hidden score ticking in the background with how you or leaning. SMT4 has four different endings, three of which are based on your ideology and that hidden score ticking throughout the whole game. Law and Order is based on. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
We got this. We're gonna do this today. We're gonna do it. Uh, now let me just give you some general tips of this one. Let me go say right now that this game is brutal, and if you're not using all the mechanics effectively, even the most basic encounters will be a pain. Most notably, the elemental mechanics. If you want an easy ride through this game, load up your character with one target magic skills of different elements and almighty later on, while increasing the magic stat religiously as it directly ties in with damage output. This means that you'll get free turns with some crazy damage that can break the game if you spec well. Having a bit of agility here also ensures you start combat encounters, so make sure you invest in it occasionally. Party composition is a massive one. You want to first be sure that you have skills that will cover any and all weaknesses, along with characters having buff and debuff skills and heals as they are fairly important in this game. To give you an idea, my party consisted of myself being a magic build, a dedicated healer with media skills and cleansing effects, a physical or gun damage dealer with high health and attack buffs, and another magic user with plenty of buffing and debuffing skills. Again, these are all really important, especially later on in the game, and you should try to get moves like War Cry, Luster Candy, and Debilitate as soon as you can. For resistances, you want to try and cover everything, so if the enemy uses something that attacks everyone, you can force them to lose turns. However, having a demon that absorbs physical is really powerful, but you won't be able to find any that have that elemental resistance until later on. Oh, and on that note, abuse all the barrier seals you can. They make some of the later boss fights where they use physical attacks a lot really easy. For apps, it's really up to you where you want to go. Buy the apps that give you bonuses to ways you play. However, if I had one suggestion, get all the skill slot upgrades immediately as you never know what you may need in a fight and early on you'll have to forfeit skills during leveling up which you may wish to transfer over. Uh, so yeah, let me rock this up with a bow. I've probably babbled on a bit too long here. SMT4 is a wonderful JRPG and possibly my favorite of all time with Persona. Uh, it is incredible with its mechanics and its combat system. It's an absolute blast to play through and had me going back to it even for a New Game Plus run. I've played upwards of 60 hours of it now and it hasn't bored me yet. Uh, it is incredible and with pennies on the dollar on the actual Nintendo store right now, it is an absolute blast and I encourage anyone to play it. SMT5 is coming out pretty soon. I do absolutely want to cover it. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or you just want to see me play that game in a typical sort of let's play format, uh, please let me know down below because I'd be more than happy to give that a shot. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all around.